My name's Neil and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. If not, thanks for joining me. Today is a kind of show and tell. Really it's just sharing my excitement and relief that I finally got the board that I've been waiting for for so long. If you've been following my channel for a long time, you'll know that back when I was a kid, I really, really wanted a Tony Hawk medallion deck and I was lucky enough to finally get one a while back now, perhaps a couple of years back. It's this one, which may be familiar looking to some people that uh, were around 30 years ago in skating. So I did a video about this before and how pleased I was that I finally got one. The backstory was that when I was a kid, about 30 years ago, I went into the skate shop to buy one of these. I couldn't find one, they didn't have them in stock. And being the kid I was, I had to go home with a deck that day. So I didn't end up getting one of these. And although slightly disappointed because I've been lusting after this for a long time and been looking at all the magazines and there was always a magazine ad with Tony Hawk riding this deck and lots of Pal Peralta adverts and I'd ridden somebody else's one of these before and I just thought it was amazing. Kind of a bit weird, kind of out there because it had such a big nose for the time. Uh, it was like a six inch nose and at the time boards just didn't have noses that long and in hindsight today it looks kind of ridiculous but Back then, you know, impressionable kid, I thought it looked amazing. It's a big deck and for a little kid, perhaps it would have been too big. But anyway, I wanted that deck. I couldn't get one. What they did have on the wall in the skate shop was a Bucky Lassock stadium deck. Just looking at it again, impressionable kid. The graphics just looked, wow, that's amazing. And kids were so driven by graphics. I don't know if they still are today, but you know, I was just wowed by this. The guys in the skate shop also said, you need to get this one. You know, don't worry about the Tony Hawk, you need to get this one. And um, I kind of fell in love with it and I bought it there and then. Now, Pal Peralta have been doing a lot of reissues in the last few years, mostly the most popular ones from back in the early 80s, uh, going back through the Bones Brigade series of decks. Um, there's probably like, I don't know, 12 series of decks now that they've released. So all the classic Bones Brigade ones in different colors. And I have a couple of those. And they'd not really worked up to releasing much in the way of the uh, decks from the 90s. There's a couple, like you can see that one there on the wall. That's the Mike Vallely elephant. And that one there, which is the uh, Frankie Hill Bulldog. And that one there, which is the Nicky Guerrero mask. But mostly the earlier ones like the Mike McGill up there and I've got a couple of the Tony Hawk ones. So as you can see I've been collecting decks and the one that I really wanted to get hold of was that Bucky Lassick. They're pretty hard to find because somehow they've become super desirable and I don't remember them being that desirable back in the day and uh, it was just, just another deck like any other. But these days they've become super desirable and if I was to try and find a, a new old stock one like my Tony Hawk there, they were selling for like 600, 800 pounds in the UK. Kind of equates to the same in dollars, so there was 600, 800 dollars for a, a new old stock one or as new second hand one. And I just didn't have that kind of money. And then a while back I saw on social media that there were rumors the Bucky deck was gonna get released and Bucky was sort of mentioning it himself as well because he was returning to the Pau Peralta as his deck sponsor. And why that one rather than any of the other decks he'd had, I don't know, maybe just because that this one was his first one on Pau Peralta. So, there were rumours but nothing concrete coming through. I sort of resided myself to the fact that I was never going to get one unless it got reissued. And in the meantime I actually got a replica made. This little replica here is a, a handboard, what they call a handboard, it's like hand size board. I got that made by a guy in Australia called Sinclair Moore. It doesn't have you know kick nose or tail or anything but it's, it's graphically accurate and I hung that on my wall instead. It was really cool of him to make for me. He makes these decks so if you want a deck, any design, 
he will make them. This was like 55 Australian dollars, which is about 30 pounds in the UK. And, uh, you know, if you if you have like your wish list of decks that you can't find or can't afford, you know, you can get these little mini ones made and it's, it's so cool. So I had that made as an interim in case I never got hold of the real deal. Well, time had passed, rumours flew and uh, it became a reality. Uh, Bucky and Stacey Peralta announced that they were going to reissue the stadium deck. Sir, do you know where I can find my original yeah, board? Yeah, that's right here, dude. There you go. You look familiar. Well, I used to work here. I oh, still do. Okay. I actually put you on the team years ago. I'm right here. Yeah, we met a long time ago. Stacey Peralta, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's right here. What are you hoping to do with this board release? There's a lot of people out there that want that board, so hopefully get that really? get that board in their hands, yeah. Collectors? Yeah, collectors and people, that's their first board they skated. Yeah, so this is my actual personal, first professional board that I got in the mail from Pal Peralta. Here she is. This board is 30 years old. And this is my first pro board. I didn't realize George and I were on your board. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get you guys to sign it. You sign this for me? Yeah, five bucks. That's an easy price. I'll get well, way more six on, on your board too, and Todd. Oh yeah. Wow. Ray you Underhill? You know, Fitz is there. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical, man. And Tony, Frankie Hill. Yep. It's Ray Barbie. Ray. Lance. Lance. Look at pear, pear squeeze in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is it, who's, who's next to pear? That? Yeah. TG. Tommy. Oh, it's Tommy. Okay. Is that Valley at the top? Yes. Wow. Hensley up here. That's great, man. Gil Sin. Unbelievable. So you saved that from back in the day? Yeah, this is one of my boards. That you never touched? That I never rode, yeah. And so this is going to be the reissue, just yeah, like this? This is the with reissue. With Fitzpatrick? Everything. Okay. Yeah, people always thought that was me. I was like, no, that's Jim. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, that's great, man. That's super great. And eventually they got released but they were so popular they were selling out everywhere instantly they're like the hardest deck to get out of all of the ones i think that pal peralta have released so far i couldn't be 100 percent sure on that but that's certainly what it seems to me but disaster strikes at the same time it seems that the uk distributor of pal peralta decks is not bringing in these decks they're not even ordering them so they're not making it to the uk and can you imagine how frustrating that is for me? This is the one deck that I want and I can't get one. It's just impossible. So luckily, I set up a alert on the Skate One website, so the Pal Peralta, their own website. Um, you know, they were selling out instantly, but they allow you to set up these alerts so that when they come back into stock, you get sent an email. And I was sitting on my computer one night and an alert came in. There were some available, so bang, I hit buy now. It cost almost as much to ship the deck to the UK as it did to buy it in the first place, but I just couldn't miss out on getting this deck. So I paid up, it's finally here and I am over the moon. So here, I have a box. I have already opened it because, you know, I couldn't resist, but I'm gonna get it out the box. And here it is. That's it, the, the real deal. They finally released it. And I have to say it is really perfect. It's, you know, graphically accurate. The shape and the pressing and everything is perfect. So I'm sure they must have used the original press or made one. There are videos of Bucky taking his original into the factory, so they may have just pressed it using his original as a template, but it's perfect. One thing that concerned me before was whether or not they were gonna do the stains properly because I've seen some of the Pal Peralta stains that have come out recently and they're not stained, they're just like a wash of paint over the top of the wood grain and it doesn't look right. 
this is proper stain as it was back in the day. This board looks exactly accurate. This is probably the best looking reissue I've seen from Pal Peralta because it's so accurate. It's perfect in every way. So I'm over the moon. And um, just to prove that accuracy, I've got an original Lance Mountain, which has the same stain on it. And uh, if you wanna try and compare, I know I've still got the plastic on the uh, Bucky, but the stains are exactly perfect. And actually, I think these were boards that were produced using the same, if not very similar mold, because if I laid the Bucky on top of the Lance Mountain, they're pretty similar. So there's very slight variation, but you know, that's an original 30 year old Lance Mountain versus the Bucky. And so, yep, it's accurate and I'm over the moon. So that's got to go up on the wall there somewhere. There's a gap, that's where the Tony Hawk came from. I'm gonna to have to do a little shuffle around, rearrange to uh, try and decide what goes where, but I've got other walls, so we'll see what happens. If you don't know anything about the graphic, it's basically all of the Pau Peralta team and their friends sitting in a football stadium or a baseball stadium. And on the top, you can see in the, the Ripper graphic, everybody used to mistake that for being Bucky. That's actually uh, Jim Fitzpatrick, who I think was the marketing manager at Pau Peralta at the time. I don't know what the story is to how he ended up on there, but Bucky said something about they were just joking around and, and that's what ended up being in the Ripper graphic. He's down here as well, kind of funny, but yeah, it's basically all of Pal Peralta on the bottom there. So that's all I've got to say, just that I'm really happy to finally have one in my hands. I'm sad that they're not making it into the UK anytime soon and they're still selling out in the USA. So they're still hard to get hold of. Some shops get them, some don't. I won't be riding this one. This is going on the wall, but maybe eventually I'll end up with one that I might ride. But it's a 9.82 width, which is a bit wide for my liking these days. Generally, I skate around a nine. It wouldn't be on my kind of preference level for something to skate right now, but maybe eventually one day I'll get one just for the fun of it. So there you go, the Bucky Lassock Stadium. I finally have one in my hands. I'm over the moon. Let me know in the comments what you think and if there's any decks that you're trying to find or one that you would love from your nostalgic days as a skater, anything that you would love to get hold of. I'd be really interested to see what everybody else is looking for out there. As ever, thanks for watching and if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and it's just a way for me to know that you enjoyed the video. So thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.